I really like databases, especially PostgreSQL. It's a remarkable piece of software. And there are so many interesting and powerful features in PostgreSQL. But sadly, in the web development context, uh, we are not using them. I was thinking maybe there's a way to make it more popular, a way to you know, bring this database power, this SQL power, to the web development world. You know, SQL has some, has those nice properties, it's declarative, and the database engines are so powerful these days. They can optimize your queries and you don't have to worry about the, the underlying details. But when you are using things like uh, object relation mapping or RAMs or query builders, you somehow trade this power and you, you have this, those abstractions which rarely allow you to use those, those powerful features. So yeah, I was thinking about this, I was playing with this idea and I was trying to make SQL like a first class citizen in the web uh, development context. And this is like an early prototype of what I'm doing. So please keep that in mind. It's not fully, it's not it perfect. Hopefully we could improve that. This is uh, Hunsvot, this uh, programming environment I'm creating. So you can build your, your applications, web applications using TypeScript. And uh, let's quickly start the server. So you can just type Control T and VS Code, and you choose server. You start your server with the deb debugger automatically attached, but I will cover that in another video. Here in the other window, I can now um, perform requests, HTTP requests. So my server is running on the port 5544. So if I query 5544, uh, it will get me back some responses. And those routes are defined here. So I can define a route. It's a simple data structure, an object in JavaScript, TypeScript, and you can just define the path and the handler, etc. So now let's think how we can bring SQL to the mix. Here in features, so features are like namespaces. Think about them as namespaces. They allow you to divide your application into like a silos or certain you know, components um, in a very abstract way. And we have this um, planet, a namespace or feature. And I have this empty SQL directory here. So I can now uh, create a new file. And let's call it browse. And this will be a SQL file. And here I want to just, you know, get all the rows, all the data from the planet table. But I haven't yet created this table. So let's quickly do that. So in the default YAML, I see that this is the database that this application is using. So I can just connect the database and I can, you know, quickly create a table. So create table, uh, planet, and um, this will be ID, serial, primary key. Now uh, let's say name of the, of the planet. And let's say distance from sun. So this will be a decimal. And um, we have a table. So now let's add some data. So insert into planet and name distance values, let's say Mars, and let's say in uh, millions of kilometers, so I don't know, 250 uh, from, from sun. And let's add Earth as well. So be something like that. And if I query now, I have those uh, data over here. So I can now close this window. I can go back to my file. And I would like to now use this SQL query in my JavaScript, in my TypeScript application. What I did is you can now, by using comments, and specifically by using the uh, JS doc format, you can uh, now annotate using a comment this query. So you can say, for example, that this query has a name and let's call it browse. So once I save it, I can give some description as well. So get all planets. So once I save, 
there is a file being generated. And as you can see, it has uh, the text of the query and potentially some values that could be output. And we will see that in a moment. So I have this file. And now let's go back to a controller and browse. So this is a convention in Hunsfeld. If you create a controller, you have five actions and they correspond to, it's like crude, but I distinguish between uh, fetching a single element and fetching a collection of elements. So instead of crude, the R is now consists of two letters, F and B. So in browse, once the server is running, I can now you know, say 5544 as before and say planet because that's my namespace, my feature. And Hunsfeld automatically, by seeing the browse, creates uh, this endpoint. So it will return this response. Okay, status good. It works. So I can, you know, change it. Say okay, I save. I don't have to restart the server. As you can see, it's very fast and it's all TypeScript. So you can keep this flow. So now I could, I would like to use this SQL um, file I created. So what I can do is I can import all um, queries. We have just one right now. And it's called this planet SQL from planet SQL. So from this uh, file over here. So once I have it, I can now import the database from HootsfootDB and I can now say that result will be a database and I, can, I want to execute planet SQL browse and I need to await that. So I need to make this function async and the result I want to return over here. So now if I query again, I have those data in my um, return from this API. But now let's try to adjust a little bit this query. And let's say we want to do our select, let's go select using where, uh, which is parameterized. And for that, I need to define a param, which will be a number and it will be called ID. So once I save it, I go back. I need to put the type on in the curly braces. So now if I save and I go back to the index, as you can see, it automatically included that and it properly put the, uh, the ID here. So now once we added this, we can see that browse no longer can be executed without a parameter and we need to pass parameter. So now if we uh, run it again, we should only get one record. So let's change it. So it works. So that's pretty much it. Uh, it's a simple way to give some sort of types to your uh, queries. You can imagine that those queries can be much more uh, complex than this. But what's nice about this approach is that you can define your queries in a file, in a proper SQL file, with some special syntax where you specify where you want to pass the input, and then you, using a JS doc, you specify how those parameters, what types they have, and what's the relation. And then you can simply use it directly into your code, so you can execute those queries you built, you know, um, in your JavaScript without using an ORM or even a query builder. So yeah, that's uh, that's all for for now. I'd be happy to have your feedback. And uh, this is just a big just a beginning. I hope to make it even smarter and more uh, streamlined. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you in the next one.